You good? You good? Yeah. Fire away. Well, I guess you guys got back, started practice yesterday, and how nice is to be back on the court and just getting ready for another another basketball season. I mean, it just feels great just knowing how we ended off so well last year. I mean, not as well as we, any team really wants to finish off, but just to be able to have another chance and just only being a sophomore with so many opportunities left. And, I mean, we just have such a great team coming in, so I'm excited. Even though you're only a sophomore, you're one of the one of the vets on this team. You know, what has it been like kind of breaking in some of these new faces, welcoming in these newcomers, whether they're the transfers or the freshmen? It's been so easy. Like I I love the chemistry that we built over the summer. And I know some of them didn't come in until like you know, like a month ago. Um, it's just so easy to be able to talk to them and they understand that we have a mission and we need to accomplish that mission. So You guys have high expectations every year, but as you mentioned, after the strong finish last season, a couple Elite Eights now in a row, what is it like to have these high expectations in for you in your sophomore year to kind of know what that feels like here? I mean, the expectations are always going to increase as the team has been together forever, um, even for Coach Schaefer. Um, but also the target on our back is going to get bigger and bigger. And the standard that we hold ourselves to within practice and games, um, they're going to increase as well. So. Whatever it is, as far as hard work and effort and attitude, it's going to increase. And then for you, just a sophomore, but that leadership role kind of increasing. I mean, you were here talking to us throughout, you know, February and, and March, especially at the end of last season. How much do you kind of take pride in being that leader here just as a sophomore? Um, being able to be a leader, part of, you know, just playing underneath Coach Schaefer and at the University of Texas is just an honor in itself. And then being able to play behind the teammates and, for the fans here, of course, it's just, it makes me feel great. And I know I have a job to accomplish, like, like I said, um, a mission to accomplish, but I mean, I'm just ready for whatever it is. I'm going to attack you. How excited are you to run with someone like Shaylee or Sonia, some of the, you know, these the transfers you brought in who can, who can, who can shoot and you know, score? I mean, we, we just started practice and we have been working out a little bit beforehand, but I mean, I've already been talking to, like, Sonny and Shaylee, like, some of the, the transfer guards, how, like, wow, like, I'm so excited to be able to play with y'all. It's like we're gelling already, and we've only been playing with each other for a couple of weeks. Um, but, like I said, I'm excited for, like, getting those assists and them racking up those points, so. What did you see this offseason from Kendall? Obviously, you've known her for a long time. What did you see her doing this offseason to get better? I mean, I see the grit. I see her wanting to succeed and get better just as, like, you know, an individual person to help her team and an individual uh, athlete and, and I love to see that and I'm excited for her this year. Um, similar to that question, sorry, <clears throat> can you speak a little bit about Aliyah Moore and how she's improved over the offseason? Oh, Aliyah, um, yeah. sorry. it's okay. Uh, just, you know, Aliyah has been such a dominant player anywhere she goes, as you can see, like she's been to, she went to USA and she did miss a little bit of our workout, but she came back and it, it seemed like she didn't miss a step. And so that kind of just explains how it is. Corey, what did you work on this offseason? What did you want to work on this offseason? Uh, every aspect of my basketball game can improve, but I definitely wanted to work on my shooting and just, you know, catch and shooting. Most of the time I have the ball in offense and I'm dribbling and finding my shots off the dribble, but I was definitely working on uh, my shooting and increasing my range. Were you happy with how last season ended or were you disappointed? I was happy. I mean, yes, you know, right after the game, they pull you in for the press conference, and you're probably like, oh, wow, like, I'm pretty upset. But when you take some time after that game and look back at how well we played throughout the season, like, I was pretty satisfied and happy. I guess my last one, we're still over here for whatever <laughs> reason. You know, how excited are you to actually go over to Moody and, you know, break in, break in that, new, that new gym? I'm so excited and I actually have seen a glimpse of it. Um, I think me and Shay both have only from the team seen like really what it looks like. Maybe some of the transfers, you know, on their visits and whatnot. But I mean, just to see it without it being furnished, like I was so amazed already. So now that it's going to be furnished in a couple of weeks, like I'm excited for my teammates to see it as well because I was amazed. So I am very excited. You haven't seen any concerts there? I did actually recently. I went to see Harry Styles. I was. It was amazing. Shout out to Harry Styles. <laughs> just one show or all five? Yeah, just just uh, one. Okay. Just one. How would you grade the Harry Styles show? Was it as good as everyone was saying it was? Yes, it was good. And I mean, I had never 
heard like being in a concert at Moody for the first time, like, like it was so loud. It was like I was like there was ringing in my ear walking outside the concert, but it was amazing. So, you know, on social media we saw a lot of like uh, team gatherings, southern hospitality, you know, with barbecues and, mm -hmm. and other things on social media. Uh, how do those moments help on the court for like newcomers and returners? Um, yes, I would say those are. I mean, those are always going to be beneficial to any team. And, like, a lot of it, yes, is documented on social media, but a lot of it's not. And that's where we really just get to know each other. Like, whatever it is, whatever we're doing, we're all, like, it's all positive. And I know we do play our games and we love our competitiveness, but it's always been positive competitive, competitiveness, so. And all those kind of helps just kind of those special moments to connect to the players off the court, right? Yes, exactly. Thank you, Rory. Thank you. 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 Thank way too early as well and so um, I'm sure there'll be something in a time down the line when we will be able to I, I, as of this morning I hadn't heard if, the, if they had finalized any services or not so that's something that uh, Coach Conrad and I were in, in uh, conversation about last night and um, again it's uh, you know I don't yeah, I'm not, the older I get Danny find myself involved in these kinds of things more and more, and I don't like it. And uh, I had to go to a rosary last Friday night. Um, it's just the part of life that's no good. So again, our hearts and, and prayers go out to the family. And uh, again, uh, way too young. No easy way to transition, but I'm gonna do it. Um, second day of practice, just kind of how the first day go and you know, how excited you to be back with this team practicing? Yeah, I'm, you know, I love the classroom. I love teaching. I love being on the court with them. This is a great group. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to play really hard for us. Uh, you know, uh, always want more. Uh, um, and yesterday was a good day, good first day, uh, really encouraged by everyone and how hard they tried to do things the right way uh, but you know we we've, we've got a long way to go and um, i'm anxious to get on the road with this group and and see where it takes us they uh, again are a great group work extremely hard and uh, you know we we're talented so um, day two's today and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes there was uh so much made last year of how tight knit that group was and how they were, it was such a family it, so early, but Rory was saying how well everybody's meshing together. Can you get a sense of the chemistry of, uh, of this year's group? Yeah. I mean, I think this group is, is, uh, is pretty tight. Um, we've had some things that we've done together off the floor. That's been a lot of fun and you see them outside of basketball, but, um, this group does have a, 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 a unique chemistry, I think to them. And, uh, they, they are really competitive. I think that's the thing this group has, um, you know, one through 14, we're really, we've got some real competition going at every position. So, and that's what I'm anxious to see in the next 26 days before we play on the 30th is, is uh, to see these young ladies continue to compete and, and play every day and get better. And uh, so, but it is a, it's a fun group. Rory's right, they, they do have a, a unique bond, I think, early already. The expectation's obviously always high, but um, is that, how much do you talk about that with them as far as em embracing that? You know, I, I think you gotta wear it. Um, man, I'd much rather be mentioned in the conversation in October than an afterthought. Um, but I think Texas warrants that. You know, this is a place of great pride and tradition uh, I've said this many times to to have Coach Conrad's program, and to me, it's 
It's her program entrusted to me, uh, comes with a great deal of responsibility. And um, you know, I want these kids to understand what that means and, and uh, the history and tradition of the University of Texas in women's basketball. And, you know, if people think we're a certain level or a certain ranking, then I want them to wear it. You know, the first couple of years, our preseason ranking, we weren't ranked one year, and one year I think we were 25. And, uh, you know, where I came from, we were used to being ranked in the top 10 preseason every year. And I think we're there this year. Uh, if somebody told me right the other day, I hadn't really paid much attention to it. But at the end of the day, I, let's don't run from it. Let's let's run to it. Let's, let's wear it. And uh, with that becomes a great deal of responsibility to me. How has uh, Aaliyah Moore uh, been contributing to the team, uh, both inside and outside of practice? And how has she improved uh, as a leader after uh, traveling with the USA team uh, during the season? Yeah, she's had a couple of good stints with USA in three on three. And, uh, you know, um, Aaliyah's just, you know, the thing we have to all, I think, keep in mind is Rory Harmon and Aaliyah Moore, while they were big contributors last year, they're just sophomores. We have to all kind of keep that in perspective. Um, and, and so I think both of them, uh, and the question pertains to Aaliyah specifically, so I think they all have so much room for growth. And, um, and, and so, uh, again, I, I know that, and I'm not going to put too much on those two and in and, 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 and Aaliyah. Uh, again, the most you improve between your freshman and sophomore year, and I think Aaliyah's had a great sophomore uh, summer because she was with USA Basketball. So uh, I'm excited to get her on the floor. You know, in three on three, they only play them on the half court, by the way. Really, the quarter court. We don't play any quarter court. So, you know, for us, we all know we like to get up and down. We like to press. Uh, we like to guard and defend. So just getting her back with us and getting her in with our habits is really good. Like last year, um, you all weren't old, but you did have two seniors in Joe and Audrey who could kind of lead the way. Yeah. Um, Without that many seniors on this team, is that Shay's job? Is that Rory's job? I mean, who's kind of the, you know, I'm going to be the leader of this team? I think, at least this offseason. Yeah, I think you've got some kids trying. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, we've got to learn to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. And, uh, um, but I, I think, you know, uh, Shay being a junior, Deanna Gaston's a junior, it's her third year here. Um, and then Sonia is a senior. She's she's been to the wars at, at, at DePaul, and so she's she's really truly the only um, senior. Uh, Shaylee's been been in college four years, and um, and, and but has really only uh, played uh, three. So you know we've got young kids trying to lead. I think older kids are not wanting to step on each other's toes. You know right now, but I think they're more than capable. Taylor has really done a great job to answer your question, Danny, of, of uh, in a leadership role. I think her voice um, is recognizable and respected. And um, I'd say if there's one newcomer that's really done a good job with it, it's, it's Taylor. And again, she's been to the wars. This is her fourth year in college. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think Rory, Rory's trying to do her part as well as a point guard. She knows the responsibility that comes with the, being the point guard and having a voice and, and being being a leader. So I think we've got a lot of people trying to figure it out. Um, and, but at the end of the day, my concern is let's let's make sure we're taking care of ourselves first and then we'll start taking care of others. Because to me, being a great leader is about being a servant leader. When you're a servant leader, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others. And when your feet hit the ground in the morning, your mind doesn't go to how your body feels, how 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 this is going on in your life. Your mind goes to your teammates. Your mind goes to uh, um, you know those in the program that that you need to be thinking of. And and so that's to me when you got that kind of a leader, a servant leader. Now you got a chance to be really good. Um, I know Blair uh, was just elevated to um, assistant head coach. Um, how do you enjoy assistant work coach? Yeah. Assistant coach. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how do you enjoy working alongside her, and how has she um, taken that role under her wing? Well, you know, her and Sydney uh, and and Elena this summer. Well, actually, back, let's go back to the spring. Um, 
did an incredible job signing, uh, you know, those four out of the transfer portal. Um, you know, 54 points, 27 rebounds out of the portal. I've said this before, it's got to be some kind of record. Um, but I think, you know, again, I, I enjoy working my, with my entire staff, their family to me. Uh, obviously, um, Blair is, is family as well, but all those people, I, I say this all the time as a coach, uh, to our, you know, we win as coaches because I, I got great players. Um, I'm also smart enough, though I can't do it by myself, and I got to have great coaches in that room with me. And and so I just try to hire people that can help me win. At the end of the day, um, and, and so it is. It is enjoyable, but I, I again, I'm. She's earned her wings uh, more than just as she did as a player, and she brings a lot to the table. Just as Sydney Carter brings a ton to the table uh, in her young career. Uh, and then I'm so lucky to have Elena and uh, and now Lindsay. So I like that staff. That's a that's a really good staff. They're doing a great job in recruiting right now. Um, you know, and and, and so uh, and I know our players enjoy them. They're working hard with them and, and developing the relationships that you got to have with our players. So really blessed to have our staff. Do you know when you all are going to be? out of here and you know fully practicing over at, over at Moody? Well, I think we'll be out of here from an office standpoint next Monday. That's what I've been told. Let's don't hold our breath. <laughs> but that's what I've been told. And, uh, you know, we'll be in the Moody as dates allow um, uh, early. And um, that our practice, facil practice facility is it will be available. You know, we're I know Coach and I are kind of hoping that we keep this building around so that even if we're not able to get in the Moody, we can get in here because this is still an arena type setting. And as coaches, when you start talking about shooting the basketball, you, know, you don't play in any gyms or you don't play in any arenas that have a wall dead behind the goal. Does that make sense? So when we go on the road and play all these different places, you need to be in that arena setting practicing, if that makes sense. And so for us, if we can't get in the Moody, we're hoping that, you know, the drum will still be here, the Irwin Center, and we can get in here because shooting the basketball obviously is really important. And uh, we want it to be as game-like as we can get. So I know we'll, we have the opportunity, we could possibly have, you know, this available as well. And so that's something that we'll, we'll continue to, to hopefully use. It. Thing but the court. It looks good. It's uh, it really looks good. They made some nice adjustments to it. So better design than I could make. Yeah. Well, you should have seen some of them. There were some quite interesting ones that we had turned in. So, uh, but it's a, it's really been good. Like yesterday was our first day on it, so it's really, really exciting time for us. What do you hope to learn or, or see in this first week's practice? Well. I, I think you're establishing a, a, a way of doing things this first week. You're, you're rekindling the old habits that this team had a year ago, but I got six new players. And so you're trying to establish a way of life between the lines is what you're doing. You're, you're trying to establish a way that we do things here at Texas. It's like our locker room saying, it's not what you do, but how you do it. That separates you from the rest of the country. And, that's what we're trying to establish with them, I think, this first week. Hey, this is what we're doing. Um, this is how we're going to do it. And this is what wins at Texas. So uh, I, I think you're always looking to improve on your chemistry. And um, certainly with as many new players as we have, we're, we're always going to be a work in progress there. But uh, I think it's that first week setting the tone of how what we're going to allow. Because here's the thing. You're either coaching it or allowing it. That's it. And uh, I really try to live that every day in, in my job. You're speaking of those new recruits coming in. Uh, what's your philosophy in bringing in transfers? I mean, is there like a, a characteristic trait or a personality that a transfer must have to, you know, be part of this team? Yeah, I think uh, for sure we always talk about recruiting to a fit, and uh, I think first and foremost they've they've got to be able to fit our culture and and and. Um, again, fit 
players that we currently have. I, I promise when I'm recruiting, I promise every parent, I'm gonna put your daughter around great other great young ladies. And uh, um, at the same time, they've gotta be able to play our style, which is unique in and of itself. So um, I'm a little different. I can tell y'all, I do my homework. I, I, you know, if a kid's leaving some other place, I, I'm gonna call the other place where they came from. I'm gonna talk to the coaches. I can tell you that's not prevalent, um, uh, and I don't understand that. I mean, whether you agree with what you hear or not, you at least need to do the homework. Um, but, uh, you know, I think for a transfer, you want to make sure that their goals, their aspirations fit your goals and your aspirations for your program. And today, in today's age, you know, it's so many people, so many kids are all about what about them. You know, the eye on the forehead, as Coach Blair used to say. And, uh, you know, with that kid probably doesn't do real good in our program here in Texas. Um, we're about team and winning championships. And if you do those things, the individual stuff will take care of itself. So uh, I always love the high school player. I always love the young kid that you can develop. But it's getting harder and harder, y'all, with – the transfer portal, it's getting harder and harder to hang on to those kids and develop them. That's usually been our secret to success. We recruit to a fit, we retain our student athletes and we develop them. But with instant gratification now in the world the way it is, it's hard to get that kid. And I think Coach Sark would tell you the day of the fifth year offensive lineman that redshirted as, an, as a freshman, waited his time and put, started as a senior and then becoming a high round draft pick is over. There's so many kids that they're not gonna wait their time. You know, they're not gonna, they're, they're not, they wanna play now and if I can't play now here, well then I'll go somewhere else. And instead of getting with a position coach, getting with a coach, getting with a program and being developed and reaching your full potential at a certain level. And so, um, you know, I, I think for us, we, I love my freshmen I have here. I can tell you that, and I don't want to lose any of them. I mean, they're going to be great. I mean, really, there's a chance for all those kids to be really, really good players in here, maybe an All American or two in the bunch. So uh, I'm excited about them. Everybody good? Good. All right, praise the Lord, hook of orange. Thank you. Appreciate y'all being here.